Hello, this is Evelyn Ray uh, with the ISSA Triad of North Carolina chapter. Uh, welcome everyone to our uh, keynote session today. Um, I have a few announcements before we get started. First of all, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, we have had two full days of workshops and sessions. Uh, we've had 32 sessions, 44 speakers, four keynotes, 15 workshops, 12 security professional breakout sessions, and two panels. Um, <laughs> you know, that is incredible. They were all well attended. Um, every session was informative, uh, current, and we couldn't be thankful uh, enough to everybody that participated. Um, we've had four, four gold sponsors and four silver. Um, you know, certainly we would love to have been in person, but um, making a shift to virtual um, I feel like we uh, knocked this out of the park. And so um, with that, uh, actually I have one more announcement. Uh, we will be giving away um, 40 $25 gift cards um, at tomorrow. So that's gonna be um, Friday, uh, 20, $25 Amazon e-gift card. So check your email. Um, and just make sure uh, and, and see if you're a winner. And so um, I would I would love to just thank these guys. These guys had a, uh, a workshop yesterday and today they are our closing keynote. Um, they are, whoops, wow, I, I hear some uh, thunder outside. That's, that's, so. that's, yeah, I'm a, that's me, sorry about that, Evelyn. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, Tenio and Silver Peak, uh, we just want to thank you for being gold sponsors this year and um, doing all that you've, we can't do this without you. Um, so thank you so, so much. We really appreciate you. And and with that, I'll stop talking and I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Evelyn. And, um, you know, before you go, uh, if you were going to go, you're probably not. Uh, I just want to say thank you to you. You know, uh, I'm sure there's a, a big virtual uh, applause going on, standing uh, ovation for you. Thank you so much for pulling all this together uh it's been it's it's quite an amazing feat and and thank you so much for doing that all right so uh end of the day here we'll, we'll try and keep it a little interesting a little energetic um my name is steve evans and and with me is john campbell uh, so he, we're, we're gonna split this this uh keynote a little bit so i'm gonna go first and john's gonna be after that uh, I'm the Senior Vice President of Solutions Engineering for Tenio, Inc., um, which is different than Tenio Group, also here with us. Welcome. Uh, John, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm John Campbell. I'm a Systems Engineer for Silver Peak Systems, and I um, cover the geographies of Virginia and North Carolina. So excited to share a little bit more time with you, Steve, and uh, the rest of the group here. And definitely thank you, Evelyn, for putting this together, the, just to, to set up all the breakout rooms within uh, GoToMeeting, uh, kudos for that uh, alone, right? So uh, um, thanks for the intro, Steve. Absolutely, no problem. All right, so it's about three minutes past the hour. I think that's sufficient. Anybody who's coming is probably here. Uh, everyone else, I guess they just don't get any of those gift cards, right? Because I, isn't that their criteria that, uh, you have to listen to this whole presentation before. No, I don't. That's not actually part of the criteria. But uh, you know, pretend that it is, and, uh, and and we'll have we'll have an okay time here. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself because you know people like to, to know who who who's talking to me. What's what's your what's the point? Uh, why do I want to listen to you? Wanna and and just from an interesting standpoint, I thought I'd just share a little bit uh, about my history uh, and 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 what I'm you know what I'm about, what I'm doing here. Um, so. Uh, this is my family. You know, I'm into Hamilton, uh, the play. I, I don't think there's a, a day that goes by. Uh, let me silence my phone. <laughs> so there's there's a there's a detail that was forgotten. Um, there's a day goes by that I don't hear a Hamilton song in my household. So it's quite amazing. Uh, my daughter there on the right really loves Hamilton music, as you can tell by that big, huge grin. Um, I also like pickleball. If you haven't tried that, definitely do that in virtual reality. So uh, I got started in this industry pretty early in life, not quite that early. 
Uh, but my technology journey did begin uh, around 12 years old when I started doing machine language coding on a Motorola 6800 processor with just 8K of RAM. Uh, I remember when they upgraded that to 16K, I couldn't imagine what you would do with 16K of space. That's probably how I felt. Um, Commodore 64, who remembers that? Uh, that was next on the list. Do you remember war dialing to find out what other computers had modems? Uh, it was amazing. And what little security there was in those days, right? Um, you could just connect to a telecom provider and see calls happening in real time with, with no login whatsoever. Not that I did that. I didn't, I didn't say I was to do, I did that. And, uh, you know, I went to school for programming and learned early on that although hacking seemed cool, uh, it also carried with the consequences, which, uh, you know, I watched as several people that I knew and had hung out with uh, were ejected from the university for successfully phishing credentials using a false login screen. Um, so, you know, kudos to the to the to the campus security team for being, for finding that and then shutting that down. Good job, guys. Um, um, and, you know, then in school, I also as an intern, I worked for a global uh, chemical company where my friends sat around waiting to be told what to do, which was usually to make copies. Um, you know, I sought out the network manager, uh, some advice there for anyone looking to get ahead, I guess. Uh, I started by doing backups, but by the time I left there, I was the global on-call network manager and had uncovered and helped catch hackers for them. Uh, that's me on the right, in case you were wondering. Um, I think I really started to get an appreciation for the importance of security when, it was, when I was writing code for website backends. You know, writing good secure code is really, really hard. I mean, it's arguably impossible to do it 100% of the time. Um, and you know, next thing I knew, I was responsible for a 60 site, 25,000 node network with as many hackers inside as out, or probably more. Yes, that was a K-12 school district. <laughs> um, there were a lot, of, a lot of folks there trying to get through my security, uh, and that really helped me appreciate that. And then I came over to the dark side and started selling solutions to customers, although I actually see that as more of having a superpower, uh, helping customers be the hero in your company. Uh, so today I lead our, glo uh, our global solutions engineering team for Tenio Inc. as a spe uh, specialist managed service provider for next generation technologies. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about Tenio Inc. Uh, later, but I wanted to just hop right into, um, you know, security and what it, what it looks like today, yesterday and tomorrow in the cloud. You know, who remembers this uh, or worse is still doing this to, to create your reaping tunnels and, and configure that, or maybe something a little more recent, but equally ugly. Um, and, you know, SD-WAN came around and that's kind of a whole new world, right? Where security, VPN, tech connectivity between a, a mesh of sites can be uh, done with just a few checkboxes in some cases. And, you know, working remotely is, is now the norm. Uh, work, it, it's not new, but it's, it's, it's really been in increasing in, in frequency. With COVID-19 pandemic, obviously it, it, it increased exponentially. Uh, call centers are now virtual emergency responders need to be connected. According to this one study, almost 90% of organizations now have been encouraged to require their employees to work from home. So, you know, current state of the cloud, 2020 facts, 93% of enterprises have a multi-cloud uh, uh, strategy now. More than 50% of uh, the enterprises workloads are expected to be in the in the cloud, so it, it's here. It's not coming. It's here, right? Fifty percent, seventy-three percent is cost savings. Uh, but the the key is there's a lack of resources and expertise to make this happen, uh, and that's and that's uh, a problem that we're addressing right now. Uh, co uh, companies like Tenio are are uh, have gained that expertise on behalf of our clients. Uh, everybody's uh, trying to get the training they need to make sure that not only can you use the cloud, but you can use it securely. You don't want to be the next one in the news about, oh, we, they, they had a wide open API uh, call to, uh, you know, whatever the system might be that's hosted in the cloud. So everybody's very cognizant of that. Um, some of the challenges around the cloud include uh, the complexity of it. I mean, especially if you're doing multi-cloud, right? I mean, uh, do, do you know how all the security components work in all, all of the major cloud providers? If you're in multiple of those, a lot of people are dipping their toes uh, in, in different uh, pools there to see, see how they work. And um, it's created a skill gap, if you will, um, in, that, in this industry and in that space. Um, you know, some of the other challenges include uh, the, the data plane. Is it, you know, they're different between each of these providers. It's, it's kind of hard to, to architect an application to work seamlessly across those. And security, 
<laughs> you know, across multi-cloud, that's even tougher, right? Because everybody does, does their thing uh, their own way. Um, and then in troubleshooting, how do you go about troubleshooting things uh, at that nature and, and, and get gaining visibility into how things are performing, both uh, from the end user's perspective, but then across these different cloud providers as well. Uh, so those are some of the challenges that people are facing. Um, which has created some new requirements now, right? From our work from anywhere to anywhere WAN uh, is, is what I'm calling it. Uh, so suddenly we have a much larger distributed workforce needing access to all kinds of apps from anywhere to anywhere. Uh, Such so as SaaS applications like Salesforce.com, Workday, ServiceNow, Box, Dropbox, or the ubiquitous Office 365. Uh, latency sensitive applications such as VoIP, VDI, and video conferencing services like Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Skype. Uh, are pretty common now. And of course, there are general business applications as well, uh, whether that's a custom application hosted in, in the data center still, or in the public cloud like Azure, AWS, or Oracle. And of course, we need to do all of that from home. So enterprises are going from tens to hundreds to thousands of sites overnight as the definition of what a site is has evolved to include an employee working from home now, right? And the big challenge is getting them all up and running, supporting them with the same or less IT staff in a secure manner, right? Uh, one organization, trial card with a few dozen sites, added more than 400 remote workers in less than two weeks. So there's different ways to approach this. Unfortunately, cost prohibits a one size fits all approach. Some workers need just kind of good connectivity, but other users, you know, maybe we call them the power users, they need great connectivity. Um, the same connectivity they may have had in the office, that high performance that they had and that always on reliability. Uh, think call center agents uh, using VoIP that need to deliver high levels of custom, customer satisfaction, uh, CAD workers, healthcare workers delivering critical medical services, stock brokers, and of course, corporate executives, can't leave them out. Uh, performance for them is key. And you don't want your kids' recreational video streaming at home to weigh down your broadband connections such that it impacts business applications either. And of course, all of that needs to be completely secure, keeping the company's network separate from the private uh, network in the home and, and whatever could potentially be there, right? So, uh, so SD-WAN has opened up a lot of things. The home workers have opened up a lot of opportunities, but it's also brought a lot of, a lot of challenges. So, you know, before I describe the, the WAN architectures and security that can evolve and scale to meet the needs of these new requirements, let's just quick take a quick look back at the legacy architectures based on traditional routers and even some of the early SD-WAN architectures. Um, they've been designed to connect that branch office worker and headquarters based user to applications um, such that in most cases, uh, the, the users were in the branch office. They had very stable connectivity back to the data center. It was very predictable. Um, you know, MPLS or dual MPLS connectivity was the norm. And, and you could really uh, understand what was going on. It was very uh, easy to secure and trust. Oh, relatively easy, right? Um, in that everybody went through a certain path. Everybody went through a certain security stack. Um, and then to go out to the cloud, they had to go through your internet security stack. So everything was known. Everything was was easy there uh, to, to understand and, and to build out. Um, so not simple, but, uh, but fairly static and the failover could be accounted for, et cetera, because everything was known. Still, these router-centric architectures required a lot of manual device-by-device -device configuration, making it difficult um, if, and time-consuming uh, to make manual ch changes to them, or, or, and, and they don't really scale very well either. And then there's that human factor that always introduces that risk of error. Um, I, I don't have the percentage here in front of me, but that's a huge uh, uh, number of, of uh, security errors are caused by just human error where somebody coded, put something in wrong, fat fingered that. Remote users um, in, in the old way were often just connecting back to the data center via VPN uh, first to reach your application. And even if those, applications were now on the internet, they still were back at hauled through the data center, out through the same security stack to the internet. And, and also typically those remote users had less stringent requirements for throughput and availability, et cetera, because they didn't often access all of the mission critical applications while remote. It was kind of a temporary thing. Most likely their primary application was email. Thus basic application security, such as just SL, uh, SSL or TLS had been sufficient. But today's challenges are different, right? Now, the anywhere workforce 
needs to connect reliably to their apps, whether that's in the cloud, data center, or at SaaS. Uh, some Anywhere workers must support real-time protocols, voice, video, and virtual works uh, desktops, VDI, uh, high performance and reliable uh, connections, low latency, et cetera. And some Anywhere sites even require higher performance, uh, such as CAD users, medical, soft, uh, medical professionals transmitting and viewing uh, high resolution images like x-rays, CAT scans, or MRIs. Um, or just workers with large data sets. Uh, the work from anywhere WAN to anywhere WAN must be able to scale reliably. And as we redefine a site to be that single remote user and scaling with the same or smaller IT staff, as I mentioned, and keeping it all secure, that's a huge challenge. One company re recently approached us, Tenio Inc., uh, to help them transition their 200 remote workers to 200 remote sites, homeworking sites, right? Um, and close down their expensive London office to pay for it. So, you know, how do you do that? You do that with a, a better work from anywhere uh, to anywhere WAN. Um, so what was that look like, right? Here's what a new work from anywhere to anywhere WAN architecture allows. First of all, we need rapid deployment uh, and, and, and it needs to be uh, available uh, uh, and, and scalable as we need it. So that's made possible by heavily leveraging uh, cloud-based solutions. Localized components, hubs, and data centers now can get the data uh, get data onto the SD-WAN fabric sooner, leveraging advanced SD-WAN functionality and application performance policies. So let's look at a couple of connectivity options, for example, those power users I've talked about uh, that need that highest level application performance and availability. We connect them directly to the SD-WAN fabric sooner with an appliance, right? Right in their home. This allows them to seamlessly connect to apps hosted in the data center, public clouds, and SaaS, potentially across separate encrypted connections or perhaps direct to net, all by deploying SD-WAN locally, uh, right there uh, as close to the user as possible. Uh, local internet break breakout, path conditioning with forward error correction, packet loss mitigation, and out of order packet correction, all those uh, SD-WAN features, QoS, WAN optimization, et cetera, they can take advantage of segmentation and prioritize secure uh, business traffic. Uh, particularly when she's sharing that connection with their users in their home, right? That would address is what I talked about earlier about uh, ensuring that the Netflix doesn't step on your on your connection. Uh, but maybe not everyone needs that kind of connectivity. Maybe for general users, it might make more sense for them to still connect via a traditional VPN. Uh, so Tenio can help integrate uh, standard remote access type VPN solutions from cloud providers like AWS and Azure or security vendors like Palo Alto Networks or Checkpoint. Uh, or cloud-based uh, services from vendors such as Netscope or Zscaler. But now due to the availability of software instances of SD-WAN, users don't need always uh, to always VPN all the way back to the VC. They can connect to the localized hub, something closer to them, if you will, uh, that gets them on the SD-WAN sooner, um, and then take advantage of that, uh, those SD-WAN technologies sooner. Um, and as for application traffic that needs advanced security services like next generation firewalls or IDS, IPS, UTM, URL filtering, AV, you know, all that stuff. Connectivity to leading cloud delivered security services can also be integrated and automated. So, you know, that all sounds great, but you know, don't all SD-WAN solution providers offer those capabilities? Um, you know, it kind of depends on what you're really looking to solve with SD-WAN. What are your desired business outcomes? Um, you know, when you're looking at at SD-WAN solutions, you think they're all the same, but there's a lot of different kinds of apples out there, right? Um, I think the last count I saw, it was over a hundred companies now said they did SD-WAN. So how do you how do you even begin to com compare those, right? And even worse, you know, what does an, uh, an apple even look like? <laughs> you know, are, are, are we even sure what we're, that what we want is an apple? Um, or maybe it's something similar to that. So one of the things that Tenio Inc. did early on, about four years ago when we first started uh, looking at the SD-WAN space, and, and uh, this is something I recommend to you as well, is, is, is we started assessing um, the, the, which, which, which SD-WAN providers was, well, which SD-WAN provider was the best? Which, what is the number one technology that can, that can solve all of our customers' problems? That's what we went out to do. And I went out as part of a team of people, we interviewed different CTOs and CEOs of different companies. Um, to help figure that out. And unfortunately, four years ago, we couldn't come up with a single product that could meet everybody's needs. It just didn't exist. Um, there, were, there were some that had, were really strong over here. There were others that were really strong over here. Um, and what we ended up doing was coming up with a vendor agnostic workshop where we would 
uh, bring go to a customer and we would spend a day or two going through uh, this workshop to discover what was really important to them. So the first thing we had to do is we had to level set. Um, what is it that you're actually trying to accomplish? What are your business outcomes um, that you're trying to accomplish with SD-WAN? That's a really important thing to do. And if you haven't done that, um, I highly recommend that's the place to start. Um, so we would, we would work through that. We would talk about uh, what are your business outcomes uh, that you're really trying to, why are you looking at SD-WAN in the first place? Is it cost cutting? Are you trying to improve performance? Are you trying to improve security? All three of these, you know, to what degree, et cetera. Um, and once you've got that, then we started to look at the, the, um, uh, at the technical requirements that, that uh, a company may think they have. And I, I have a bullet here where I said that, you know, are your technical requirements actually requirements? <laughs> or are they just a holdover from an old problem long ago solved and no longer relevant in today's business outcomes? I find that's actually far closer to the truth than you, you, might, you might be willing to admit right now. So it takes a little bit of close introspection, uh, introspection there. And, and being true to yourself on that, to ask that question. Do I really need to do things the way I'm doing them or are these just holdovers from a long ago problem? Uh, because SD-WAN, one of the, the, the tenets of SD-WAN in my opinion is to simplify the network, make it easier to manage. So you, you don't have that one guy who, um, you know, if he leaves the company, you, you now have to pay him big bucks uh, ongoing to make any changes to your network because nobody knows how the network really is working. And if you make a single change, you're gonna break everything. And I've seen that in a large retailer, uh, uh, premium retailer that, that we have as a customer uh, where they had that situation uh, prior to SD-WAN. So um, that, that's a real thing and, and, and an important thing to find out what it, and, and to get worked out. So after you've got your business requirements, you've got your technical requirements, um, you're gonna to wanna to look at, um, the different features that are available in SD-WAN. There's about 40 different things that SD-WAN can, can do for you that it proposes it will do for you in about eight different categories if you wanna look at it that way. Uh, we would, in our workshop, we would go through those and kind of uh, say, okay, let's make sure we're talking the same language. If we're talking about um, uh, QS, what does that mean, for example, or, or uh, path conditioning, someone might call something path conditioning, so another person might call that forward error correction. It, it, you just have to know what all the terminology is. It comes back to the apples to apples, right? How do you compare uh, all this literature from all these different companies um, when when they're all different? Um, same things are, but they're called something different. Um, but so we go through the features and then map those to the business requirements and the and the technical requirements and prioritize them. So what, let's let's get the priorities in uh, in place for what is it you actually are most important to you and your company as your goals for your SD-WAN, we've now mapped those from business priorities to technical uh, priorities down to specific features of, of the technologies that are available. Let's start to look at the at those technologies and see who can actually deliver on that, right? Um, and the other the other thing that, uh, a big thing that, that people sometimes don't consider when talking about SD-WAN is security, right? I mean, we're here talking about security because it's important, but there's so many people who are looking at SD-WAN, they're not the security team maybe, and they're not, they're not really thinking about it the way they should be. So where does security fit then? Um, there's some different thoughts. Um, SD-WAN solution can add in security features. So uh, a, a known SD-WAN solution can add in security uh, features. A security solution can add in SD-WAN features. So you can think firewalls, right? If you got a firewall and they've added in or bought a company, and added the, the security features in, that's that's another option. Or best in class, choose the best SD-WAN and the best security solution. Uh, that's that's kind of the third uh, way to go about it there. And uh, one of the reasons we are you know here today with Silver Peak presenting is is that they're they're in that last category there, and we'll talk about them a little bit later. And 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 John will cover that in detail as well. So what about multi-cloud? Um, that's where does security fit with that? SD-WAN certainly can help with multi-cloud. It makes it easier to get into all the clouds for sure. Um, but what about the security of multi-cloud? Um, and and uh, you know, do you deploy firewalls and all the different clouds? Do you, how do you do that? Uh, you know, it's one of the challenges that the Tenio Inc. We we uh, we addressed that pretty quick. And what we came to the realization was we needed to integrate and pull in partners that could provide an, an uh, kind of an overlay across all of the multi-cloud. 
uh, provide you know all the cloud providers such that when you put in a firewall you put it in like you would any network um, and then let the underlying technology handle all of the communication between the different multi clouds so that your policy is the same uh, across all of them so you're not trying to figure out how to deploy a Palo Alto in a Amazon and a and a Palo Alto in Azure and and in Google uh, you just deploy it on in one place just like you would normally and it, and let the underlying software take care of it because that's what SD everything is about, right? It's making it easier, uh, making it uh, less uh, prone to error, et cetera. And then also getting visibility across all those, those cloud, uh, those multi-clouds as well. That was something that we had to address. So I would, I would recommend if you haven't thought about that, you know, there are technologies that are available to do that. There's partners who understand how to do that. And if you don't have that expertise, you're gonna to want to reach out to them and make sure you've, you, you cover that off because that's, that's a big headache when you're trying to figure that out and it's a huge, uh, point of uh, risk if you're trying to learn three different clouds uh, how they do their security and keep that all separate. You're going to want to get that together and unified. Um, and you know what about the endpoint? Uh, you know it's it's like oh well what does that have to do with SD-WAN? <laughs> you know uh, but it's it's important right? Uh, they're the ones who are accessing it. How are they getting there? And are they now secure? And do you do you do you really want to uh, just um, assume that's going to happen all right um, and, and this comes back to one of the other considerations uh, uh, is that you want to get everybody involved in the project early so if, if you're if companies uh, or organization is looking at SD-WAN they should have the networking team they should have the security team they should have desktop they should have application they should have their DevOps they should get all these guys involved because they all have unique needs and the earlier you pull all those together the, the more successful your project will be the more uh, the, the less risk you're going to have. We had a session yesterday about de-risking your SD-WAN deployment. That's probably one of the most important things right there is to get everybody involved. Um, but another point is here, and you see this bullet here that uh, need a human behind the wheel. Um, you know, hackers will get through. All right. I mean, think about nation state governments and the resources probably available to them or the you can get uh, a million dollars for finding a, an exploit for an IOF for an Apple phone. Right. Uh, uh, to, to root an Apple phone or more. And there's other exploits that people are, with those kind of resources coming against you, um, if a hacker really wants into a network, it's gonna be really hard to keep them out. Remember Target, right, everybody? Target had great technology in place. It was that the people weren't paying attention to it, right? So one of the things that we've done also, again, at Tenio Inc., is we, we try and integrate the human into that service so that there's not just technology. Technology can be great, AI, big data, you know, machine learning, that's all wonderful stuff. It makes it so that you can get down to the really important stuff, but ultimately you need somebody who can say, you know, that doesn't look like that's quite right. Let's go ahead and lock that PC off the network for a minute and alert the company that they need to go take uh, re-image that computer or, or at least take them off the network because we think that there's something going on there and then we find out we're right so now let's go give you the information you need to reimage that computer or what, whatever it is that is the next media uh, mitigation step. Um, you know, other considerations, um, you know, underlay via uh, visibility, you know, does your SD-WAN uh, mask the problem with the underlay or help you hold the ISP's feet to the fire? End user experience, uh, are you validating how the end user is, is, is he better or not since you're, you upgraded to SD-WAN? Are you uh, able to see network uh, the network performance of the application? So if there is an issue, where is that issue? Uh, do you have the resources to uh, to do all that's necessary? Low level design, high level design, reverse that order. Uh, you know, creating methods of procedures or MOPs to do the migrations and operationalizing it uh, 24/7, 365. Do you have all that? If not, find a partner uh, you know that can help you with that so that that de-risks things. Um, do you have the cloud expertise that you need? Uh, if not, there's people out here who can help with that, right? Um, how current is your network documentation? You know, do you need audits? Do you, you know, those things, a lot of people forget how to do. There was a customer that we had, we went out, they thought they had two circuits into the site, they actually had four. I don't know how you, you, you I don't know how that happened, but that was something we found. Um, do you need help building ROIs uh, or logistical help? You have uh, sites all over the world getting, equipment into some sites uh, into some countries is difficult it's something that we we excel at ourselves you may need to get some logistical help don't forget to look at that that's an important aspect to uh to any project and then just a quick overview of tenio inc because we think we do all the stuff 
in an awesome manner. Obviously, that's why we're here, uh, paying to be gold sponsors and 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 talking to you guys as as we think we can help and we hope that you 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 agree. The one thing I pull out of there is our average rolling CSAT score, ninety eight point six percent, with almost ten thousand tickets that we uh, process annually. Um, people really uh, appreciate a, a, a support staff who just doesn't close tickets as quick as they can. Their main goal and the thing that they're uh, rated on is that customer CSAT score. So they're very, uh, very um, incentivized to make sure that our customers are happy. Uh, you know, we focus on SD-WAN, but that's that's got three aspects to it, performance, visibility, and security. <laughs> Don't forget the security part. Um, and, you know, I mentioned earlier, we're a specialist integrator of next generation technologies uh, and we have our managed services and services wrapped around that. And just a quick look at our SD-WAN journey started back in 2011 and has progressed all the way to today. And uh, we have had a, a lot of experience there. Look for companies like that when you're working with these things that, that have some experience with this. Um, you know, we developed our, our, our patented, <laughs> it's not patented, but our design and migration uh, uh, processes that to ensure that, that that these things go fine. Again, your partner should have done this. They should know how to do this. It should be an easy process to go through. When we do uh, deployments, are they are they um, are they simple? No, but they're I mean they're easy, but they're not simple, and it requires planning. Uh, any kind of planning. Any anybody who says that you don't need planning is is really just selling you something. Um, when you're re-architecting your network. Um, it, it, you need to put some time into that. You know, yeah, you can put in a, a, a Silver Peak Edge Connect into a data center in 15 minutes and it go flawlessly, but that's with maybe 40 or 80 hours of planning, right? To make sure that everything goes well. Um, and that's, that's what we found. Uh, so we have services around that. We have SD-WAN services, managed services, uh, co-managed services, et cetera. Uh, you know, I love that quote. Tenio is very much an extension of the JLL team, which is the biggest compliment I can give them. Uh, we we get those kind of compliments. We love that. So some case stories, just to wrap up here, a few customers we've helped with SD-WAN that might uh, be of interest and, and help to you, uh, and SD-WAN in the cloud. Global pro uh, property management firm, 113 locations, 60 billion in assets. Um, you know, they, they needed, they needed uh, agility, right, for growth. There's different needs. Cloud and applications needed faster performance. Um, high WAN costs, segmentation of applications between sites, no standard site deployment model, and, and why SD-WAN, and you see the checkbox there, provided a wow user experience. <laughs> That's what I like to see, a wow user experience, right? Ability to turn up sites fa faster, integrated WAN op and SD-WAN. Uh, only solution that they, they found that could reliably run VoIP and video over the network, uh, which was really important to them. Uh, here's another one, uh, a multinational uh, consumer goods uh, manufacturer, 211 uh, global sites. Uh, their problem was they had no local IT skills in 90% of their office, uh, traditional edge hardware deployment, high WAN costs, managing multiple technologies. So ability to remove those routers and WAN optimization devices from all branch locations, Removal of MPLS and 70% of branches, simplified Zscaler deployment, enabled direct internet access, savings in excess of $3 million per year. Um, you know, Zscaler deployment, uh, it's an important point. We had another customer that had already started their Zscaler deployment. And uh, thankfully, we were able to get the security team pulled in before, uh, to the SD-WAN deployment very early. And as soon as they realized we realized that they were doing a Zscaler deployment, we showed them how easy it was to use the Silver Peaks as that on-ramp to the to the cloud, so to speak, and you know, with very simple configuration to to uh, connect to Zscaler, and they stopped their Zscaler deployment until they could get the the Silver Peak in place, um, because they knew it was going to be a lot easier and save them a lot of time there. Most multinational law firm, you know, their their big thing was, you know, we have we have um, the lawyers they 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 have phone calls VoIP with their clients. It has to be good quality. It has to be. That's the main thing we do. It's we're talking to people, right? So VoIP was extremely important to them. And again, Silver Peak was uh, uh, very, very good at improving that such that the MOS scores, as you can see there, remain very high. Even, even when um, the circuits, underlying circuits were having a lot of problems due to their forward error correction technology and whatnot, um, it was able to allow them to continue to uh, have great um, performance. So, so why, are we, why are we here today with Silver Peak, right? Presenting, um, you know, the best in class SD-WAN and best in uh, class security options for you, right? Um, we found that oftentimes companies already have a strong security posture, 
And, and one of the goals for SD-WAN is not to lose that, right? Silver Peak not only allows companies to, to choose the best in class security, but they have lots of uh, things that they can do to help with that and to integrate with that. For example, Zscaler deployments are much easier uh, than done any other way. And the visibility included in Silver Peak is, is fantastic. They have that single pane of glass management for those business focused policies. Um, traffic uh, you know, uh, grooming is, is optimal. Um, and best of all for this crowd is, you, is that they will work with whatever security solution is close to your heart. So uh, that's why we're here with Silver Peak today. And uh, John, if you're ready, uh, next we're gonna hear from John Campbell uh, about Silver Peak's SD-WAN solution and its fit in, with the new cloud enabled edge and how that impacts security policies for business. So John, it's provided sure, this form Steve. of taking you out. Uh, you can go ahead and, and, and grab presenter or you want me to do that okay. for you? Uh, I can make myself the presenter and I can uh, show my screen here. So um, can you see my Steve, uh, see my screen now, Steve? Yes, I can. And, and I'll just also mention um, if any, if anybody has any questions, uh, I'm going to be monitoring for, for John. Uh, I'll be monitoring the questions pane and, and we'll, we'll try and get those answered for you. And I also just wanted to point out that there is a handout uh, for the Tenio Inc. data sheet. Uh, it's a data sheet for Silver Peak, our, our Silver Peak managed service as well. All right, John, all yours, sir. No, thanks. Uh, appreciate it, Steve. Now, I don't have nearly the, the great pictures or funny jokes as you, but I will tell you, there, there is a thunderstorm going on outside my house right now. And if it, if it lightnings or thunders and you hear a little dog or a little five-year-old girl come in here, it'll be a great joke and we can talk about it next year at the, the happy <laughs> hour. So hopefully I don't lose power and hopefully uh, we don't get too much craziness going on in the background, but uh, that is the, uh, the world we're living in today. So um, once again, I'm John Campbell. I'm an SE for Silver Peak. I uh, wanted to spend a little bit of time to talk about Silver Peak and talk about how we work with Tenio and, and, and help some of our customers solve issues, right? And uh, approaching digital transformation and how we can play a part in it. I'm gonna bring up a very busy slide, but what I want you to, to, to think about when you think about Silver Peak is we're a company that has been helping our customers build better WAN networks for over 15 years, right? We got our start in the WAN optimization space and became a leader in that space. And about six years ago, we transitioned from a company that was focused on WAN optimization to a company that was gonna be focused on this emerging technology called SD-WAN. And what was very interesting about it is a lot of the key tenants of our WAN optimization platform, like our path conditioning and our tunnel bonding technology and several others, that were really good in the WAN op product actually aligned quite well with what would become SD-WAN. So uh, it was a great pivot for the company. And we have, like I said, we've been helping our customers build better WANs for a very long time. We haven't, we, you know, we're, we're not a fly by night company. The core of the SD-WAN product has been tested and tried across a whole scope of customers that are out there deployed. And it's, it's a really great story around it. So a couple other things about Silver Peak, you know, we're, uh, we're a growing company, right? That, that's very exciting to be part of a, a growing company. We have customers all over the world. We have deployments all over the world. And we also have the resources on the back end to back that up, right? So we have a support team and logistics team that can provide follow the sun support, 24 seven support for all of our customers. And it's been really great to be part of this growing company that's making investments in all aspects, right? It's sales, support, the product, we're rolling out new features and new functionality at a very aggressive clip due to what our customers are asking us to do. We're, we're, we're a flexible company, we're reactive to our customers, and we want to enhance what they're doing from a network perspective, and we want to provide that you know, application performance and user experience. That's what we're all about here at Silver Peak. So a couple of statistics there for you to take a look at. Um, now this one, you, you know, folks have probably seen this 
uh, I'm not going to uh, talk to it too much, but I, I can tell you that at Silver Peak, we're really proud to be recognized in as a leader in the land edge infrastructure magic quadrant two years in a row. So uh, a, lo a lot of pride in that, a lot of work went into that. And it, it's really about having the vision for this product with, with, with our um, leader, David Hughes, who, you know, you'll, you'll, if you hear him talk on some of these other webinars, he talks about the self-driving land. It, it's going towards that vision, right? Having the vision of it and then the ability to execute on that vision is what, what allows us to be successful and for our customers to be successful. So we're looking forward to what's going to happen in 2020, right? So uh, look forward to seeing what that is or, or how this, this, this may change, right? Um, so I've got the same kind of slide Steve has. I think he thought mine looked cool, so I kept it in there with the clouds and, and the splashy stuff, right? You, you all know this, that your applications and how your users consume services is changing, right? And how do you, how do you change with that? It's around digital transformation, right? And with Tenio Inc. looking at digital transformation for your whole, whole organization, we think there's several pieces of it, right? And Silver Peak is a SD-WAN, and, and Silver Peak's implementation of SD-WAN is really a building block for digital transformation, right? It's providing um, network connectivity and user application performance as a core tenant of how you transform your infrastructures to the next generation um, network environment. So, as I mentioned, WAN Edge Infrastructure, SASE, that's the new thing that Gartner's coming out with. I'm not going to profess to be an, an expert on uh, all parts SASE, but, you know, the Silver Peak approach to this particular topic is allow you to use best-in-class, right? So, Edge Connect, Silver Peak is a best-in-class SD-WAN product out there. We want you to have the freedom of choice to use the best-in-class cloud deliver security product that, that is out there for your organization, right? So you can have the freedom to change with, the, with that company or change companies on how technology is changing so quickly, especially in this COVID environment where I, I feel like it's accelerated um, things more than, more than anything else I've seen in my career, right? So uh, I'm, I'm sure you all feel the same way. But our approach is to say, it, it, you know, there's two pieces to it. Let's go to the next slide, right? So when we look at what SASE is, or this is what Gartner says SASE is, there's the uh, marriage of SD-WAN or network technologies and cloud delivered security technologies together to provide a SASE network architecture. And when you look at all the characteristics that are listed under the network um, column there, we provide the best in class in the SD-WAN space for those particular services. And the way we look to get our customers to the best in class SASE environment is to leverage other providers in the security space. So we're, we're, we've made a decision that that's the approach we're gonna take is to allow the companies that do that the best, um, there's other magic quadrants for, for ranking those type of disciplines around security or cloud delivered security. We are gonna partner with them to complete the picture around SASE, right? Uh, and that's what that looks like from a Silver Peak perspective. For, those of you that joined uh, our SD-WAN workshop yesterday, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit and demonstrated some of it. So we uh, went through an environment that showed, you know, branch connectivity that was using SD-WAN for uh, inner site communication for that, those customers that still have some on-premise data center connectivity needs. And then using one of our third-party um, connectivity options, automated options to deliver cloud-based security, right? So uh, if you were in that class, you saw we, we have a whole bunch of them, and you'll see them on the next couple of slides here, of who we have in, in our uh, playbook to, to use, right? And it's, it's all about combining best of breed, best of class to deliver that experience to the end user and maintain security compliance for your organization. So this has all of our strategic alliances around Silver Peak is, as I mentioned, we want to protect the investments that you have made in other technology disciplines and use us to enhance your end user experience with our SD-WAN product, right? So we run the gamut across the different disciplines, as you can see there. But if we focus on the security partners, that's our, that's our um, longest list of partners, right? And this list is growing every day. Um, with new partners that come out. So we 
as a company look at, and we kind of categorize each one of these security partners in different, different ways on how we connect to them, right? There's the manual way of doing it. And most of those partners are, do not fall into this bucket, but, but the flexibility and the diversity of the Silver Peak Edge Connect allows you to connect to service chain to any type of security service that you have, right? And you can manually build an IPsec tunnel. That's uh, kind of basic networking 101. So we support that for customers who want to do that. When we look at the next tier of, of security partner or ecosystem partner, we talk about in integrated orchestration. And what that means is we have a team of folks here at Silver Peak that um, work with those companies to develop best practices, design guidelines, around how to integrate the Silver Peak SD-WAN with the customer's uh, existing security system, right? Uh, whatever that may be, it could be one of those on the list. If you go out to our website, you're gonna see where we've published these documents and you go to the security vendors and, and, and look at their websites as well and see us listed. So we do design, publication, and validation for integrated orchestration partners. And the third category of, of ecosystem partners for Silver Peak is uh, these automated um, configuration partners. And what that gets you, and we kind of demonstrated that yesterday in the, the workshop, is the ability to use um, Silver Peak and cloud security delivered solutions to automatically complete uh, tasks between the two systems, right? Whether that's tunnel creation, whether that's failover, load balancing. Um, detecting outages, those things are happening with uh, a certain number of the vendors that I showed you on the previous slide, but we're moving towards having all of our partners do that, right? We want to have the integration within our environment and within our partner's environment to enable that. And that allows you to get the best of breed services on an SD-WAN side and on a security side and, and also get the benefits of the automation, right? And that's where you really see a big um, productivity boost from your your IT staff to get that uh, to get that with us. So we talk about that in terms of digital transformation and the journey, right? So if you talk to Tenio and, and Steve kind of walked through it, right? What are you looking to accomplish in terms of your new gener your, your digital transformation next generation network that's going to be cloud more cloud delivered services, less data centric services. Um, what are the business goals around that, right? And that's a great place to start. That's not necessarily where I fit in the mix. I'm, I'm more on the technical side, but that drives matching up what the business needs with what the technology can deliver. And as I mentioned before, SD-WAN foundational to most customers we talk to, their digital transformation, right? We're, we're usually one part of that puzzle. It's a very important part because it kind of sets the foundation for the, the rest of uh, the things that happen. But that is, is, is really where we want to play, right? We, we want to be part of the journey. We want to be foundational to it. And we want Tenio to help you get there, right? And, and as far as all the other parts that are concerned in that um, cloud infrastructure, multi-cloud, everything kind of Steve was touching on. When we talk about Silver Peak, there's, there's some core tenants that we, we hold near and dear to our hearts here. And um, the first one is really a, a, the big one, right? Uh, quality of experience is really something that's important to us and drives our decisions and how we deliver our technologies and what, what features and knobs we put in there. And it's really focused around two pieces. It's the quality of experience for the end users and the applications, right? So we want the end user to avoid bottlenecks, have a consistent application experience, regardless of what's being uh, happening on underlay networks from a circuit perspective. Um, the second piece of that is if those folks are happy and having a high quality of experience, it translates into a high quality of experience for IT. And that allows you to be more strategic in what you're gonna do on your next project, right? Instead of triaging events or being reactive to things that happen in the network, you're able to get ahead of it. And, and we see that a lot, we hear that a lot from our customers. If you look at some of the case studies that we have or some of the things we put out on social media, it's from our customers around, around how we've helped them get ahead of things from, a, from an IT perspective. Uh, and it, 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 it's good, it's good for us. It's good for me personally when I have a customer who, who appreciates that and sees value in it. The other two things that, that are listed there, um, cost savings, right? This, the, we, 
The bottom line is with Silver Peak, we don't care what you use from an underlay technology perspective. There are, like Steve mentioned, there's a lot of customers that are, or a lot of vendors out there that are, are having some type of SD-WAN functionality. And, you know, the Gartner report lays it out who, who are the leaders in that space. And what you'll, what you'll definitely hear from us is, is you, you can transition away from legacy type of networking services that are maybe high cost and, and um, a way to save money from, from a going forward basis. It's you, this is usually not the biggest driving factor in what I see from deployments, but it is an ancillary benefit. So bottom line is we, we, what I see most of the time is customers have a hybrid environment, right? Where there's some legacy networking involved. And, and that's going to stick around for a while, maybe until contracts are up or, or, or more things shift out into uh, cloud-connected apps. And Silver Peak is uniquely positioned to handle that, that kind of that migration or that hybrid environment as you go through this digital transformation process. And lastly, I think I've said it a few times, we're about freedom of choice, right? We want you to... As Steve mentioned, we don't want to change everything you're doing from a security perspective. We want to enhance what you're doing. We want to allow you to incrementally grow and change uh, to meet your users' needs and to also maintain security and clients, right? It, it, that's a big part of what we're doing. We're, we're, we want to allow you the flexibility to change as technology changes because it changes fast. Right? I mean, SD-WAN is changing, uh, it seems like, every six months, every year that there's, there's things happening with it. Um, so we want you to have the freedom to choose who you want to use, to evolve with them. You're not going to lock in, buy the whole stack, um, and, and really, as we said, get the best in breed from a security perspective and an SD-WAN perspective. So this looks very similar to what Steve had. It's kind of repetitive, but um, you know, I, I'll echo our, our deployments. They, they run the gamut of, uh, you know, a do-it-yourself customer, a co-managed, a fully managed. We have different consumption models for how you can uh, consume SD-WAN services. And Tenio is obviously able to, to also be flexible in all of those deployments, right? And I, and I echo what Steve said. The planning, the planning piece of this, it, to me, in my, in my experience, is, is the most critical as you, as you kind of work up through the deployment phase. If you've done planning right, deployment should, should go off with a hitch. And, and this isn't just specific to SD-WAN. It's, it's, it's really anything, right? Um, so uh, it, it's Evelyn planning out this uh, go to meeting with 40, 42 different sessions. It's, uh, it was well planned out and we executed well. Uh, so the, the, you know, the kind of the, what happens after day two from, from a managed perspective, right? We, if you sat through the workshop, you got a little taste of what we do from a day two ongoing maintenance perspective and how to um, manage change within the network, right? Because it's going to change. And we have a lot of different ways that we can help automate some of those things. We have a, um, other tools that can help you um, make changes quickly to a lot of different devices out there or, or adjust to what the business has asked the network to deliver. We've, we have the technology and the tools to do that at scale very quickly. And then, you know, what happens not on day two, but on year two, where, where are we at on year two and Silver Peak, as I mentioned, we've been around for such a long time. We're all about uh, evolution and we're all about the ability to change where, where things are moving to. Right. And, and, and I'm sure if we have this meeting next year and we're talking in, in, in real person, hopefully um, it's going to be a different story. I'm sure technology is going to change and we're going to, we're going to evolve with it. So, uh, but, but Tenio is, Tenio Inc is, is the, is the, the partner to take you through this whole life cycle. So that's all I had. I, I, um, I, I wanted to just kind of give you a little, uh, little taste of what of Silver Peak was, how we look at things. I, I want to thank everyone who attended the workshop yesterday. Um, and, and those who want to also do it, we, we, I'm sure we can, we can throw some things up there. But does anyone have any questions out there? For either one of us, actually, I and I did answer yep. a question somebody had there about. Um, uh, I think they were asking you about Tenio, which was we had followed the Sun support, um, and and I just answered that that yes, we do our, our follow the Sun support. We have uh, help desk, service desk, knock in the Australia, UK, and then the US and the uh, Washington DC area, Atlanta, and California, as well. And then there was a question about HIPAA, whether we had issues with that. I mentioned uh, where ISO 27001 certified, 9001 certified, 
Um, and that there's sometimes their clients require the data not uh, be accessed out of sight of a specific country or only by certain staff of a specific country. And we can support that as well. Uh, we've done some, uh, we're doing a large uh, solar peak uh, deployment right now for a defense contractor who uh, uh, obviously has a lot of very strict requirements around security, around access to that, uh, to data, around FIPS, et cetera. So you, you can support all of that. That's right. Yeah, FIPS, uh, GD, the European standard GDPR, I think it is, right? So, so yeah, absolutely. We have, uh, from a Silver Peak perspective, we, we can check off the compliance uh, boxes as needed. Yeah. There's another question here. Was the workshop recorded? Yes, it was. Uh, I believe uh, it will be presented along with all the other recordings for all the other workshops. Everything's been recorded, uh, so it should be available. And one other thing I think that was put uh, in the chat by Amber, we, you know, if, if you want to do a test drive of Silver Peak, we do have a, a lab that looks very similar to what I did in the workshop yesterday that is in the chat box where you can go and register and you can do a little tire kicking on uh, our system to kind of just feel it out and, and get an idea of, of what it looks like. And um, it's usually kind of first step. And then you obviously talk to Kenny and we can come in and have a much, uh, deeper conversation or a bigger demo or um, even a bigger lab for you to go through. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tenio Inc., we do have a, a, a real world lab. It has a, a number of different technologies in it. Um, Zscaler, we've got multiple circuits coming in, MPLS. We've got uh, firewalls, different firewall technologies in there. We've got different security, um, uh, uh, different, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. And so it's a great lab. Uh, sometimes our customers will um, we'll use that lab. We'll, we'll have them in for a week uh, to uh, set up some specific scenarios that they're really interested in around maybe their exact topology and, and that kind of thing. We can we we can do that as well. So um, you know, it's a very valuable to do a POC in a in a in a lab setting like that rather than try and do it on your live network. Although we do support that as well, um, so we we can do that. What was that, John? I, I agree that the, the, your lab and the ability to execute different scenarios within there with, with, with live equipment, it's very, it, it's very impactful, right? You get a lot out of it and, and you may get enough out of it where you don't want to go through the whole, the whole exercise of actually putting gear in your network and, and going through that, that, um, that particular exercise. We support that as well, but, uh, right. Know. Yeah, and, and typically the way it, it, it actually goes is somebody will do that. They'll they'll mock up some things in a the lab. They'll make sure everything looks good. And then they'll want to say, okay, well, let's go ahead and, and we're going to go ahead with the project, but let's start with a smaller pilot. So we'll do the head mm -hmm. end and maybe two or three sites and we'll get that all set up and working. And then they're like, okay, we're totally, we, we totally get that this is going to work. Uh, we ironed out some of the kinks if there were some, of course, there's always something, right? Um, and then sure. we can roll out in mass. So that's usually how that rolls. I'm oversimplifying just a tad bit, but yeah. With all the pros you have on your team, it's a breeze, right? <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. All right. So any final questions here? We're uh, just three minutes at the end here. Uh, appreciate everybody's time today. Hopefully the, we, we gave some things to think about, some things to take uh, with you as you end this awesome conference that we've had. And um, Hopefully we'll get to talk some more and uh, uh, look forward to doing so if we do get to chat with you. Uh, my name is Steve Evans. You can reach me at uh, sevans at tenio.net. So that's sevens <laughs> at tenio.net. Uh, that's, that's how you would reach me, John. Uh, J Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, -L, like the soup, at silver-peak.com. And it, uh, it should be in the chat as well. Yep, I just the, saw that. Yeah, chat. so it, our, our emails have been added to the chat if anybody wants to reach out and ask us any additional questions after this. Appreciate everyone's time. We're going to give you a couple minutes to back into your day. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and a weekend. Take care. Thank you.